We are staying in a Disney World suite that can cost over $2,800 per night. Can that possibly be worth it? Let's stay in a Disney's Riviera Resort two-bedroom villa. Ooh, let's go. Let's go. So <laughs> We are here on a rainy but beautiful day at Disney's Riviera Resort. This is actually the newest hotel in Disney World besides the Star Wars Hotel. Um, and it does have a theme that is to the European Riviera, mostly French and Italian, uh, pretty much themed to Walt's travels with his wife around that area of Europe. Now, this is a Disney Vacation Club Resort. That's Disney's timeshare program, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But you do not need to be a Disney Vacation Club member to stay here. Now, we are staying in a Disney Vacation Club room. We are not DVC members, but we are renting DVC points through David's Vacation Club Rentals. Riviera Resort is a Skyliner Resort with its own dedicated station, meaning you can get a to some of the other hotels as well as Hollywood and Studios and Epcot really easily. It's not running right now because it's super rainy, uh, but usually an awesome amenity. When you arrive at Disney's Riviera Resort, you will probably arrive here at this Port Cachere either by your airport shuttle drop off or by your own car. They do have valet parking for $33 per night. Otherwise, parking is free for overnight guests and you can park in the East or West parking lot. But we are heading inside because we've got to get checked in so we can see our room. So Riviera has a relatively small lobby as a Disney Vacation Club Resort. It's a little bit different than your standard deluxe hotel because it is a deluxe villas hotel technically. Now that said, the lobby is beautiful. It's just not going to be quite as grand as other deluxe options that you'll see around Disney World. And it's gotten some criticism about that, including from me. But at least there's this very big and beautiful window that looks out on the lawn. The check-in desk is to your right as you come in and you are welcome to check in via the desk or you can check in on the My Disney Experience app with mobile check-in. Check-in is at 4 p.m. for Disney Vacation Club Resorts instead of the usual three. We did check in on the app and so we just got a push notification and a text when our room is ready. You can kind of opt into what you want to be notified with. And so we know that our room is ready. We have our room number in our phone and we can use our phone to open the door. To open the door? So oh, I'm, welcome to the I'm really Riviera. feeling the Riviera. You can use your phone to open the door so we don't need to stop by the front desk. We get to skip it, skip any lines. So uh, I think we're gonna go find our room. I'm so excited. We're on the third floor, but you can use your room key if you get one from the front desk, which you can do even if you check it online. Your magic band, like I have my very thematic Tron magic band, or your phone to get into your room. And my magic band did automatically link. Sometimes it doesn't. Oh my goodness. Immediately, this is bigger than the apartment I currently live in. <laughs> okay, just quick overview. So this is the main space. The center of the room is here in this main space. Um, we've got a balcony here off of the master bedroom, which does have its own uh, bathroom. Oh my gosh, this is huge. Look at this bathtub. And there's a whole another half to the room over here with the other bedroom. This is a two bedroom suite and we will look at all of it. This room is huge and amazing and expensive. And uh, I think we should take a look around, don't you? Might as well. Let's we're do here. it. Well, I mean, like, come on, we're hanging out. I guess we should look around. If we have to look around the incredible room. Oh, I, I guess mean, we will. I guess we will. You know. <laughs> TV. Welcome to my two-bedroom villa. Let's check it out. Thank you. <laughs> Alright, so we're starting the room tour at the door, which has this very beautiful, exciting light above it that casts a lot of light on the walls. Um, there's a peephole, and then you've got your standard Disney door locks here, as well as this cute little like side table thing, which like you can put your keys on. I don't know why you would have your keys in Disney World. Your magic bands can go on that. There you go. And then you've got hooks for like coats and stuff, which is another obviously very helpful thing. Uh, we have gone ahead and moved our bags into this room and Emma's in here. So don't mind that. This is a really big room. This is a two bedroom suite here at Riviera Resort. And again, it is Disney Vacation Club. We have here the kitchen and unlike most hotel rooms, this is not a kitchenette, it is a full fully stocked kitchen. So let's check out what we got here. We're gonna go kind of fast because it's a lot. Uh, in these cabinets up here, we have serving dishes, wine glasses, a ton of wine glasses. We've got this final cabinet, which is gonna have the toaster. We've got a full microwave here. It's a very large microwave. Um, and DVC rooms are typically the only rooms in Disney World that have microwaves at all. There's a little cabinet space above the microwave with nothing really in it. Then you've got this cabinet, which is gonna be your plates, bowls, and little plates. And look, these are those bowls 
they're like shallow plate bowls. Then in this cabinet here, we've actually got casserole dishes. You can make brownies. You've also got this list of the things that you'll find in your kitchen. And if you need something extra, it talks a little bit about how to make requests. In this cabinet, we've got mugs, plenty of mugs, plenty of glasses, short and tall, juice cups. You've also got all of your coffees and teas, um, as well as any like accompaniments for them and to-go coffee cups. And you have a full coffee maker in here. I love this because I like a lot of coffee and also I don't like the way coffee tastes out of those little single serves. So this is very exciting because you get this full coffee machine. Very exciting. And that was only the upper cabinets. We also have a full sink, full like kitchen sink situation here with a disposal. And then we have uh, some paper towel, which ours got a little wet, don't worry about that. And a full four burner stove, which is wild. Also an oven for the brownies that we may or may not make. Baking trays are in the oven. Then we've got this drawer here, which has a couple of like cooking utensils. There's a pizza cutter, wine opener, which is great because I love to forget a wine opener when I wanna drink wine on my trips. Um, pots and pans, plenty. You've got saucepans and like skillets and things like that. We also have um, spatulas and more cooking utensils here. A uh, bunch of different silverware, any cutlery you might need. In this cabinet, there's a colander, mixing bowls, cutting board. Oh, like Pyrex containers, like Tupperware and a uh, measuring glass. I have the same measuring glass at my house. Under the sink, we have a trash bin here as well as um, like a dish rack, more paper towel, a sponge, some dish soap, some detergent for the dishwasher, a washcloth, and the drain plugs. That's Fry Bucket's iPad, foreshadowing her arriving tonight, <laughs> and also does not come in your room. And we have a full dishwasher here, two levels. This looks like a pretty nice dishwasher. I'm very particular about how dishwashers are loaded, and this one looks like it would be nice to load. Um, and finally, we have here your trash can that slides out of the cabinetry. And that is the kitchen, but wait, there's more. We also have the fridge, which is a full fridge over here. Cabinet above the fridge has a pitcher for like Gatorade or juices and your ice bucket. So you can get ice from the hallway, but you don't need to because there's also an ice maker. Yes, an ice maker in your hotel room. Full freezer, this is bigger than my, this is not bigger than my freezer, but it's pretty big. It's bigger than my old freezer for sure. And then you've got full size rest of the fridge as well. I just like burped mid-sentence. You got your full size rest of the fridge as well, veggie, fruit drawers, everything you need. You can literally stock up on groceries and just stay here. You can basically live out of this room. There is a little dining nook, which is super cute. It's got this booth on the wall that has this really pretty like Riviera drawing paper or a pattern on it. And then you've got your dining table as well as these two chairs. So plenty of room for folks to sit. I really love the lights in this room, mostly because of the pattern they cast a mirror above it, and there's this really cute Riviera print. Another thing about this room is you'll see a lot of amazing art because that's kind of a staple of Riviera. In the hallways and in the rooms, there's lots of art that was commissioned specifically for this hotel, um, and you'll see that around for sure. We've got a nice full couch, which there's a secret to the couch, uh, but we've got lots of art behind the couch. We've got the cute Mickey and Minnie line art, this adorable print of Lata Ye old Taylor. Look how cute that is. It's my favorite print in the room. And then this Beauty and the Beast like abstract piece. Uh, there are throw pillows on the couch, which makes it feel very homey. You've got these two like chairs. There's this coffee table thing, which actually opens up and is storage for the room, which is great. You've also got this ottoman, which can be a seat or also storage. I also really like the carpet in here. I think the blues and oranges are a really good look. In general, the design of this room is really beautiful. Like it's like a really nice room. There's a really, really big TV in here. It's bigger than your typical TV you see in uh, Disney hotel rooms, which is great because it's obviously a very big room. You've got your little telephone safety and security note. You've got your remote and then you've got your take along guide to the magic. And these are Samsung smart TVs in this room. So it's not going to work like a TV where you're as limited. You can typically cast to these TVs as long as there's not a glitch, um, but you can cast and, and everything like that, which is one of my favorite amenities to find in these hotels. Also, it's in this chair right now. The room has this story of Disney 100 in it, which is a um, like in-room amenity from Disney Vacation Club. And you can purchase a copy of it in the gift shop if you like, but while you're staying, you can literally look through this book. Then we have um, one of your in-room telephones. Yes, there are multiple. So that's where you'll find one of them. 
and your windows. So these are the smaller windows in the room, but I love them. I think they feel very homey. We've got a beautiful view of the pools and the um, Barefoot Bay beyond. I can see Caribbean Beach. We can see the Skyliner. It's just a gorgeous view um, to look out and be able to see this from our room. And we have many windows to do so with. And not just windows, we also have balconies. Before we go out there, let's take a look at curtains. All of the windows in this hotel room do have privacy curtains that look like this, as well as full-on blackout curtains. These ones have this nice blue pattern that do have kind of a hidden Mickey in there. Yeah, that's definitely a hidden Mickey. You can block out any light if you're napping. Um, we do actually have two beds in this room, so there could be someone napping in here. And yes, I said two. Do you know where they are? One is here. Wow. Wow. And it's got this adorable print of Mickey and Pluto lounging what looks like on the Italian seaside. We also have uh, the, there is a, what is this called? Murphy bed? Murphy. We have a Murphy bed in here. And we had some issues getting this down earlier when we tried to, but we're going to see. The redecorating has gone very soon. But it has this beautiful mural of Peter Pan and Wendy and John and Michael flying out of their room in London. And also something I love about the Murphy beds here at Riviera is they do have these alcoves that have outlets in them. So you can um, literally watch stuff like from your bed and charge in these little alcoves instead of having to reach all the way over to these convenient but kind of far side tables. I also really like that the Murphy bed here has these little, like the sides of the couch because one, it looks more natural when it is up and the couch is more comfortable than other Murphy beds in Disney World. And two, it's kind of nice to have like a little cushioned seat on the side of your bed. Let's head out on the balcony though. It has gotten dark. It took us a long time to take pictures of this room. If you ever want to see really detailed shots of the hotels, you can check those out on allears.net. But we have the first of our balconies over here. Um, it's a very spacious balcony, definitely more spacious than balconies I've seen at other hotels. And you've got two chairs as well as a little iron table. And the chairs do have that beautiful Riviera Resort logo in them, which is just a total vibe. The railings also have hidden Mickeys in them. So cute. And then you've got your beautiful view, the Skyliner in the distance and everything. You can just kind of see people out and about. This balcony is also very private. Um, one side of the balcony is the living room where you can see Emma redecorating and the other side is a wall. So our room in particular, we've got a pretty private balcony here. I think for most of the two bedrooms, you'll see a private balcony kind of like that. We have a little bit less private of a balcony on the other side. I particularly love that we can see the beautiful Rapunzel mosaic, Tangled mosaic from here. So pretty. Now there is a door out here from the living room. There's also a sliding door out here, which is locked. So I won't be going through it from the master bedroom, our next stop, but let's go this way. Now also, obviously this door is a window, but if you don't want that window, cause you're napping, you can pull this pulley like you're working in a factory. And then you get this full out blackout shade. And when I stayed in the tower room, I did uh, sleep with the blackout shade at one point and it was fine. There was a little light coming in. So if you need pitch blackness, you might struggle, but, um, it's not quite as effective as like a blackout curtain, but it's still plenty fine to block the door light. All right, then we are into the first of the two bedrooms. So this is the master bedroom. As you can see, it is a king size bed with five pillows. And then I have decided to offer this room up to Fry because she is currently attempting to ride everything in Disney World in one day. Which is horribly hard. And we're here. Yeah. So she gets the nice bed. Yeah. Um, it's really cute. There is a little Mickey towel when we came into the room. Um, and this is a very spacious bedroom. There's a ton of floor space and room for activities. You could do a cartwheel in here if you could do a cartwheel, which I can't. Um, I love the headboard. It's, I would never put this in my home, but I do like looking at it here. How fancy is that headboard? It's also got the Mickey's hidden in the corner as well. The number of hidden Mickeys in this room, amazing. Side table wise, we've got on one side, a pretty small side table uh, with like a smaller drawer, but plenty for what you might need. There is this lamp. And then you've also even got a place to sit and get ready or like read if you wanted to. Um, this is one of my favorite prints you can see in Riviera. I had this in my tower studio when I stayed, but this is like an Aristocats print that I love the style of. You also have the big sliding door, which serves as your window. Typically, when you have a Disney hotel room, this is kind of the only window you get, but obviously, it's still plenty of beautiful view. Then we have a smaller TV, but this TV is standard size for a Disney hotel room, as well as a dresser here. So there's no dresser in the main space, as you might have noticed. 
Um, the storage out there is mostly in those ottomans. But there is a dresser in here. Uh, and it has six of the drawers of that size and then three of the drawers of this size. So a lot of storage space there. This is a smart TV as well. So the boots around the dining table on either end also have drawers. So while there's not as much storage in this main space for whoever's staying out here, there is storage space in the ottoman, the poof, and in the drawers over here. Also in the bedroom, we've got a full length mirror. So you can see me do this. And a closet, which is a full, really big closet. So you've got some shelves in here, an upper shelf, as well as plenty of coat hangers. You've got your valet service for your clothes and then you've got a luggage rack in here. We have a desk in this room if you need to do any work while you're here with a nice desk chair, plenty spacious desk. Um, I think Fry will probably do some work here in the morning. And we've got a little drawer to keep things as well. Another lamp on this side of the bed and it kind of serves as the side table for this side of the bed. You've also got your other phone. So if you get a call, you might have to reach a little, but you probably could get away with not getting out of bed. And another mirror, so you can see me do this. Nice. Emma was very thrilled because these are sliding doors that close like this. And they do have this beautiful um, design to them, which is awesome. You open these up and these lead to the first segment of the master bath, which is the most literal bathroom ever because it's just a room for a bath. Huge, beautiful jacuzzi tub. Emma literally said she's taking a bath later. I don't blame her. Plenty of towels in here. And we've got a uh, sea salt bath soap from H2O. So pretty nice, but you'll notice the bathroom is completely like marble. Also the lighting fixture in here has kind of like a, it's diamonds, but it has like a bubbles vibe. You know what I mean? Huge vanity to get ready at. Um, you've got tons of vanity space here. Just one sink in this space, but don't worry. There are plenty of sinks. Um, we've got, tissue as well as facial soap and body lotion. Really big mirror here and this is very well lit. I would feel comfortable doing my makeup in here and also you can see me do this. They do have a makeup mirror which means we get to look at me looking funny. <laughs> and uh, hand towels. There's little ledges where you can keep your toiletries and stuff while you're in here as well as drawers which I don't often see in Disney hotel rooms bathrooms. You can find your hair dryer here. There is this big old cabinet with plenty of space in it, some extra tissue and some extra toilet paper in there, as well as two shelves right here and a trash can. So even if you had this room with a lot of people sleeping in here, you would probably have plenty of room for everyone to keep their stuff separated. And this room does close completely off. So if you've got somebody who wants, you know, a bath in private, they're able to do so. And it locks on both sides as well. And we've got the rest of the master bath here. Um, we've got our shower, which is a beautiful shower. It's like all marble, glass door. You've got a shower head that you can move around as long as a full, as well as a full waterfall shower head. And it's very spacious with a little bench in it. You've got the refillable H2O shampoo, conditioner, and body wash, and um, a little nook for stuff, as well as of course a clothesline for you to dry your clothes if you need. So just a beautiful shower. Got the ever important commode. There is a Princess and the Frog print here, which even has Charlotte, uh, who reminds everyone of Emma. And by everyone, I mean me. Toilet paper and little trash can, as well as more towels and this note to remember to conserve water. Behind the door, you've got hooks for your towels, as well as more towel rods and towels. And then we've got another vanity here. So somebody else could be getting ready in this space and the body lotion, a sink, and there's this cabinet under with more toilet paper, more tissue, and then these little uh, nooks on the side. And that is the master side, or as we've been calling it, the east wing. The entryway has these like beautiful kind of like stylized mirrors. They're not really for, for looking at. And then we've got another closet out here, which is one of the bigger closets. It's like a, it's really large actually. There's a vacuum in here, as well as an in-room in-wall safe. Um, another set of coat hangers. There are these hooks. I think this usually has a broom and a mop, but I don't, there's not one in here. And then an ironing board. Um, you've also got your extra pillow and blanket, your iron, um, and another extra pillow and blanket, which you need a few of because there's a lot of beds in this room. So if you're going to use all the beds, you need a lot of pillows and blankets. Behind me, 
We've got another closet, but it's actually your laundry machine. So yes, full laundry machine in here, washer and dryer. Um, it's not the biggest, but you don't really need super big for vacation. Most likely there is laundry detergent in your room, two bottles of it. And these cute little like laundry trays basically for you to, for help doing your laundry washer and dryer in room that you can just use whenever you want. Another major amenity to staying in a room like this. So then we got another one of the stylized mirrors and another closet. There's so many closets in this room that I feel like I would lose my stuff. This one's like a full, pretty much like a walk-in. It's got tons of space. Great spot for hide and seek for sure. There is a shelf up here as well as more hangers. So just a nice coat closet with plenty of space for people to store things. And then we head into the second bedroom. First thing to know is that the second bedroom does close completely off from the rest of the room. And this room is sized like a typical Disney hotel room. So you've now made it to what a usual Disney hotel room is like in this two bedroom suite. When you enter, you've got this nice little like uh, side table, which has two drawers um, that you can keep stuff in if you'd like. And another beautiful art print. I'm not sure what movie this one is referencing. Oh, it's Cars. Cause look, Lightning McQueen. Oh my gosh, and the whole island's a car. Look at that. Okay, I see it, I see it. Then you've got your bathroom for this room. Similarly, the bathroom is kind of separated up. So you've got one room that you can completely close off with sliding doors and lock. That is your commode room as well as shower room. And uh, it's the same shower. So a little bit smaller, but same seat, same hutch and soap. Um, same shower head. So two beautiful showers in this room. I love this tile behind. That's so gorgeous. We can check out water pressure as well. So it's a little less than I like, but still not bad at all. Oh my gosh. Is that going to like spray me directly? It's like facing me. Um, but pressure's fine. It's not the best, not the worst. I think it would feel great after a long day at Disney World. Towels, more art, trash can, and toilet paper. This is a long room tour, but we got to see it all. You can also completely close off this room with sliding doors. We've got a vanity for this room. This is the smallest vanity of all. There's not a ton of space here on the actual countertop, but there are shelves on the bottom with another hairdryer, more extra uh, toilet paper and tissue. We've got your tissue box up here as well as facial soap and body lotion again. Another makeup mirror. Whoa. Then we also have another bathtub and another shower right here. So I think what, like four different bathing places? That's wild. Um, big hutch as well as the Disney H2O things, more towels. This has this really nice like mint green shower curtain, maybe more of a sage um, with Mickey's on it. And then this one does not have the waterfall shower head, but does have the same uh, detachable move around shower head, which is nice. And not something you see a lot in Disney hotels. Across the hallway, we have another closet. Um, this is more sized like a standard Disney closet. Shelves on the side, shelf on top, more hangers, and a luggage rack. Now, one thing I'll note, there are no robes in this room. I'm sad whenever I'm not provided with a robe. Another full length mirror where you can see me do this. And then the room. So this room has two queen beds, again with beautiful headboards. I love these like really nice, they look sculpted headboards. They're probably not, they're probably mass produced, but they've got little Mickey on them and they're super cute. There's another Mickey towel in here. And then on either side of the beds as well as between them is one of these three drawer little bedside table situations. Outlets in the wall do have USB ports and there's three drawers in these that each are about this size. We've got these beautiful lights with this nice geometric metal to them that are individually controlled. No reading lights, so keep that in mind here. Um, another great print with Mademoiselle Mouse. Um, and then another phone, so another chance to not have to get out of bed to answer the phone if it rings or to call if you need to. Um, and then queen beds. Now under these beds, as well as the beds in the master, you do have storage space about this much. So plenty of storage space under the beds. And interestingly with these beds in this room, there are drawers in the bed frame. So more storage space. We've got a sliding door here. Um, and you can see space along with our stuff. Um, but sliding door here, sliding door here that leads out to our second balcony, 
also pretty large, a little smaller than the others, just it's a little thinner. Same Riviera chairs and uh, same like ironwork in the thing. You'll see a little less private because we've got a privacy divider, but it's not a full wall between us and the next suite. And then I have a really nice view again. The room itself is also fairly large too. This is bigger than most value hotel rooms, just this room on the side here, where you can see there's plenty of floor space. Um, we've got a seating chair here in the corner along with a nice mirror. I want this mirror in my house. This is a good mirror. Um, and then we've got another dresser here with the same three, three big doors, six small doors combo, and another smart TV. So we're watching tons of TV in this room, uh, as well as the remote. And finally, the other chair, another trash can. Okay, that's the room. Pretty amazing, right? And you can save like 20 to 50% on what Disney would charge you for this without being a part of DVC by just renting points through somebody like David's Vacation Club Rentals. All right, I'm taking my hair down because you know what time it is. There are five beds in this hotel room and we got a bed sign some off and I'm gonna need help. Emma. <laughs> it's yeah. it pretty comfy. I'd sleep on this. I'd be happy to sleep on this. If this someone is... was like, hey, do you want to come stay with me in the yeah. Riviera? I'd sleep on this bed. Yeah, happily. Like if you're the one single friend on like a yep. couple's accidental couple trip, this is a great option. Yep, that's and you a have a little option. light. Me too. Also, I like Mickey and Pluto. Okay, it's time for the Murphy bed. We're not going to leap. We're going to fall. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think the other bed was more comfortable. I don't know. I kind of liked the give here. I think this one's firmer. Yeah. I feel like uh, there's give. I feel like the support is different on my back. They're both actually pretty good. Yeah. I'd, again, happily sleep on either of these. Significantly better than a, a pull-out couch bed. Go, go, go. <laughs> you can't run a Disney roll, but you can run your two-bedroom suite. Ready. <laughs> <sighs> How is it? Pretty good. Yeah, mine too. Good bounce. Good bounce. I gotta go. King bed, king bed. No! <laughs> that was almost a really bad glide. There was almost on camera injury. <laughs> but you know what? It was a great jump. Yeah. Um, this is comfy. <sighs> Definitely the so best jump. So they all feel the same. Yeah. The beds all feel the same. This is a nice bed. And also, I, I spoiled the pillow test for myself because yeah. I did land on them. But look at it. Look at my head sinkaging. All right, so... That's the room. Room. Pretty wild. Yeah. Um, we're gonna head out. We're not gonna do our exploring because it's too dark and you guys can't see. So I'm gonna take a full exploration of the resort tomorrow that we're gonna check everything out um, that you also get because you're staying here at the rest of the hotel. But tonight, we're hungry. So hungry. And you know what? There's a lot of amazing food here. I'm it's gonna show you some of it. Favorite place to eat. But first, we gotta talk about money. <gasps> So we are, of course, in a two-bedroom villa, but other room types at this resort include the Tower Studios, which you can see me stay in on the channel now. Those sleep just two guests and are the smallest rooms in Disney World hotels. There's also Deluxe Studios here, which are standard rooms. They sleep five. Then you've got one and two-bedroom villas, like the one we're in now, and the three-bedroom Grand Villa, which sleeps a whopping 12 people. It is a massive room. Views wise, you're looking at standard or preferred views and you're pricing for these rooms when you're not looking at rental points. Uh, if you're paying cash for these rooms, which you certainly can, is going to be pretty expensive. Rates vary depending on the season, um, as well as like the room type and the view type. Uh, and you should always check for special offers because special offers can save you some serious money in Disney World and they crop up all the time. But the cheapest rooms at Riviera Resort, those tower suites that sleep only two people, generally cost from around $450 to around $800 per night, depending on the date. So even the cheapest rooms here are pretty expensive. This room with all of its massive space, if you're going to pay cash for it and not DVC points, is going to run from around $1,550 per night to around $2,800 per night. It's expensive. Maybe you're splitting that with all your friends who are staying in here. It wouldn't be too, too bad, but it is not cheap to stay here. So it's July, which is an expensive time of year to come to Disney World. And for next Monday, a two bedroom suite is looking at about $1,000 per night using David's vacation rentals instead of buying cash. So if you're looking at one of these rooms at all, renting points can save you a lot of money.
Now we are hosted in this amazing room by our friends at David's Vacation Club Rentals. That is how we're able to show you such an amazing hotel room. So as I mentioned, this is a DVC hotel. And when you stay in a DVC hotel, DVC members rent those rooms with points. But when they're not gonna use their points, they can rent their points out to other Disney guests who are not DVC. So even though we are not DVC, we were able to rent points instead of paying cash for this room. David's is a service that helps you do this and guests can save 20 to 50% off when booking with David's as compared to booking the same room at the amount that Disney would sell it for. When booking with David's, guests can save 20 to 50% off what you would get for booking the very same room from Disney's reservations. David's was the first ever DVC rental company and has 17 years as one of the leaders of the community. When you do this, the reservation is totally booked in your name and can be linked to your My Disney Experience profile. It's linked for us. It's linked for Fry, who's staying with us tonight. And Fry even used it to get into the park's early entry this morning. The team at David's works with 15 DVC resorts, including Aulani in Hawaii. You can find them on social at, at DVC Rentals or go to their website, dvcrequest.com to learn more. So, you know, big asset there, renting renting DVC points. Um, my family has done it for a long time. It's how we often tend to stay in two bedroom villas at Saratoga Springs or Old Key West, which is cheaper than Riviera, but still provides a ton of space for a family, especially with adult kids. So it's just something to look into if you're going to Disney for a long time, if you've got a lot of like people in your family and you can save a lot of money if you're using your kitchen, just not spending on food. So it's just things to consider, it's options. Speaking of food, we're not using the kitchen. We're going to get some of that good, good Riviera food. Let's go. All right, we've made our way to the very top floor of the Hotel de Topolino's Terrace. Um, this is a pretty fancy restaurant. We're not here for dinner. We're just here to see if we can maybe get a glass of wine and some small plates as an appetizer. Um, and we're gonna see if there's space at the lounge for us to do so, which is first come first serve. So it is a little later in the night, but there's plenty of space here in the lounge. The vibe is so beautiful and we get to just walk right up and have a lounge meal. And on top of that, it's just about fireworks time. <gasps> It is fireworks time. So Topolino's Terrace does have fireworks views and you can actually go out on the patio and watch them. I think we're gonna watch them from our table today, but we'll walk this out there and show so it. so special. You also can see two and sometimes three different fireworks shows. Yes. So not just the one. Yes. All right, so we're uh, waiting on our food. So I'm just gonna step outside real quick to get a view of the fireworks. They do pipe the music into the outdoor patio, but not the indoor seats. So if you want to get a full view of the show, you wanna walk out to the outdoor patio. And it's a little busy, but oh, is it a good view. Just in general from up here, the view is gorgeous as well. And uh, we walked right in here without a reservation. So you can do that too. Uh, we're obviously just getting small plates, but you can actually order off the full menu. And if you want to see a full dinner here, you can check out Emma and Fry's Skyliner Perfect Day, um, where they, they're they filming it tomorrow, if they're gonna come have dinner here, uh, without a reservation, again. But in general, this is gonna be a nicer restaurant as it is a signature restaurant. It's gonna be a little bit more expensive, but it's gonna have really fine dining. French and Italian cuisine. Uh, it's very nice and we are very excited. We're just having some appetizers, which is a great way to experience a place like this without dropping a ton of money. All right, Emma and I went ahead with glasses of wine. Cheers. So Emma went with a Moscato because she likes Moscato. I like something sweet. I like other white wines, but if I really just want to enjoy something. Moscato. Um, and I got Cabernet Franc, which is, uh, this is a French wine. It is one of my favorite types of wine. It's actually my absolute favorite. Cabernet Franc is a lighter grape with a lighter body, so super easy to drink. Um, but then it's also herbaceous and often peppery. And my favorite note that's in it is green pepper. Also, even when you're at the lounge, you do get the bread service with olive oil here. It's this beautiful fresh baked bread, which is designed to look like wheat stalks. <laughs> and you get it with olive oil. It's very warm and pretty helpful when we're just getting small plates. I forgot we got bread. I forgot we got bread, but I'm very excited. Me too. The bread here is delicious. It's super crusty on the outside, but not so much so that it hurts your teeth to bite through. And it's a little crackly, like Colette says in Remy. You tell good bread by the sound in Ratatouille, I mean super soft on the inside and it's so delicious when it's warm. It's also served with really high quality olive oil. I think the only thing I wish there was is maybe a little bit of balsamic in the olive oil, but otherwise, 
amazing bread course. All right, so here is my gnocchi. This is actually a little bit newer. They've always had gnocchi, but it's changed since the last time we were here. So right now it has the braised lamb shoulder mushrooms, a red wine jus, and carrots on top. And I've already eaten a lot of the carrots because they're crispy and delicious. In the past, yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah, they're so good. In the past, it has been duck-based with duck uh, meat in it, and it was wonderful, so I'm hoping it still lives up to those standards. And this is the Olives Marinier's. This is one of my favorite things you can get at Riviera. There are amazing olives here at Topolino Terrace and also at Le Petit Cafe in the afternoon. These are made with lemon, garlic, marjoram, and bay leaf. These are the best olives I've ever had in my life. I love getting these when I'm at Riviera. Emma does not like olives. They're really nice. And she likes these. I do. How's your gnocchi? Absolutely lives up to my memories of the old gnocchi. Arguably probably the best gnocchi I've ever had. Gnocchi is so soft and pillowy. The mushrooms are really meaty, which I like because the lamb is just falling apart as you bite it. And then with the really nice crunch from the carrots texturally, it's just really nice and kind of comes together well. And then with the red shoe at the bottom, there's like an extra creaminess and savoriness that Frankly, I wish this portion was double the size. It's absolutely delicious. All right, olive time. They're bursting with flavor. They're covered in, I think, olive oil, which is funny because they're olives. Garlicky, and we have all of the best character of olives, all of the like lightly sour, tangy, like earthy notes that olives come with, but never gonna make you pucker because they're balanced so well by other flavors in the dish. And I've never loved eating whole garlic cloves more than I do right now. All right, so we had our lovely small plates appetizers, but we need a full dinner. And for that, we're headed to the quick service here, which is Primo Piatto. This is one of Emma's favorite quick services on property. And they have a lovely menu that is kind of like shocking to see. So from 10 to 11, Primo Piatto is open, but they go to a late night menu that is more limited. Um, we couldn't get the menu to pull up because the app was glitching. So we're just gonna check out what our options are. So Primo Piatto has lots of options. You can get yourself a bottle of wine, you can get beer or anything as well as just regular drinks, milk. Um, They've got a bunch of grab and go options like little parfaits and also some fancier desserts like this fruit rouge cheesecake or the tiramisu. There's also Greek salad, charcuterie, um, lots of like salads and things like that. So we're gonna see what we can get from grab and go and I think have some pretty tasty dinner. We're grabbing and going. We are, we'll be grabbing and we'll be going. There's also pastries and things like that. That's more of a morning thing in my opinion. We've acquired our grab and go. So all that's left for the late night at Prima Piatta, that last hour, the 10 to 11, it's while we're here, but always check hours, mm -hmm. is their grab and go, but they have a lot of their stuff available in grab and go. They do. And nothing hot. Yeah, but... nothing hot, but there's a lot of uh, resorts that don't offer that at all. Yeah. So when you get home from the parks, nothing, you know, something's yeah. better than nothing. A lot of times resort dining will close at 10 p.m. And 11 p.m. is really kind of a hard cutoff. So just make sure you're checking hours because it can really be a bummer to come back from the park. Fry is that extended evening hours. It's, she's gonna get back here at 11 p.m. So luckily we are gonna have some stuff for her to have if she's hungry. All right, so here's the dinner of uh, champions. <laughs> we've, got, <laughs> we've got the charcuterie here, which has uh, prosciutto, salami, olives, more olives, Olive. grapes, as well as some variety of cheeses. Uh, Emma went with the Disney check kids meal because she really wanted a turkey sandwich and good for her, you know? It comes with some cucumbers and tomatoes, as well as some apple chips. We also got a little dessert to share. This is the uh, fruit cheesecake they have. They just had some strawberries on top. It looks amazing. Um, and then I got an Encrustable to go with my uh, charcuterie. So this is what we went with for dinner. Grab and go at Primo Piatto is certainly limited. So if you want like that good hearty dinner, a burger or pizza or pasta, you're gonna wanna get there before they go to the late night menu. Um, but I love that it's an option because a lot of times you just need something kind of snacky like this at the end of the day. You probably had dinner earlier, but maybe you've been riding rides for a few more hours and you just want a little something. This is great. So we're gonna have our in room at our dining table dinner. Um, and hopefully it tastes good. We've tried the charcuterie. Um, I think it's pretty good. Actually, the brie is nice and creamy. All of the, the brie is creamy. No. The other, I don't even know what this cheese is. The blue cheese, that's why I like it. Overall, 
I actually think the prosciutto is pretty nice too. I, I mean, like, for a grab and go, for a grab and go, this is the maybe the best charcuterie grab and go I've ever had in Disney World, and mm -hmm. it's better than some charcuteries I've paid for at restaurants. We're impressed. I prefer this to Brown Derby's charcuterie last Financially, time. absolutely. Oh too. my gosh, no question. This is like nine dollars. Yeah, much better. Cheesecake. I already had my bite. Mm. Nice, creamy. Not the best cheesecake I've ever had, but for a grab and go, pretty pleased. Nice and sweet. It'll get the sweet tooth job done. I think the flavors are really balanced. Mm -hmm. Like there's there's this layer of fruit at the bottom that's like just kind of like a fruit jam. Yeah. It's kind of like reverse cheesecake topping. Mm. Um, and the cheesecake is really sweet, really like, I would say almost overly creamy. I like the lighter cheesecake and this one's kind of heavy. <laughs> Okay. Good night. Good morning. I know that I said good night over there, but now I'm in the other wing, so it's like it's a different day. It is. Um, Fry and I are going to go pick up breakfast at Le Petit Cafe. We've got resort day ahead of us. Um, two different ways. I'm gonna do resort tour day, and then maybe we'll head to a park to see how long it takes. And they're gonna do resort perfect day Skyline. at all the Skyliner resorts. So definitely check that out. Um, but right now we're gonna go pick up breakfast and we're gonna get back to this room because I'm drinking my coffee on our patio. All right, we've gathered our petite cafe. It's in this bag. We're waiting on our coffees, but the premiere just started. Um, all these YouTube videos live premiere on Tuesdays and Saturdays at 10 a.m. Eastern time. I just dropped my magic band. And typically Fry or I or somebody else from the team will be in the chat. In fact, always someone from the team will be in the chat talking to you guys. Um, it's one of the most fun things we do. We absolutely love watching premieres. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna watch this Game Master premiere, hang out in the chat, and eat our petite cafe in the room. Okay, so we're doing breakfast on one of our balconies. And we went and got some pastries from Le Petit Cafe. And then got a cinnamon bun. Fry got chocolate banana bread, and I got a blueberry muffin. And we also got our coffees. Emma went with a raspberry mocha. I got my favorite, the almond cold brew, and uh, Fry got an iced caramel latte. So it looks pretty delicious. And of course, we have this lovely view. They are blowing leaves right now, but it's still pretty nice. Okay, we're on the balcony. We're seated. There's only two chairs. We could go get the other chair from the other balcony. I wouldn't do that. Too much work. That's There's no need to do, do that. that. Um, so yeah, we've got our breakfast. Eat, I already said it was eat. because eat. Yay! Um, I'll review my coffee first. This is the almond cold brew here from Petit Cafe. This is my favorite coffee in all of Disney World. And with good reason. It's like a super almondy, not too sweet, but definitely like on the sweet side. Cold brew. The coffee here is a Joffrey's blend that is one of my favorite Joffrey's blends of anywhere. Yeah. And the whipped cream on this is an almond honey whipped cream. I don't usually like whipped cream on my ice drinks. I love it on this. I love stirring it in. So I highly recommend if you like almond. Mine is very similar, um, but it also has raspberry in it. And so it's extra sweet, overly sweet, and I love it so much. But it's one of those, it's like artificially sweet to the point where your teeth kind of feel a little funny after you drink it. Does that make sense? Yeah. They don't, and that's how this is, but I like that. And then I always get the caramel macchiato, which, you know, you can get anywhere. But I'm not kidding when the, I say the amount of caramel that they put in this, it's... Oh my gosh. And it's at the bottom, so every time you take a sip, it's there. So it's so good. I love it. Best coffee in Disney World, all of us agree. Mm -hmm. Le Petit Cafe, even if you're not staying here, Skyline on over. And then pastry-wise, Petit Cafe has a bunch of pastries. They have rotating seasonal ones as well. Uh, these ones are all delicious. I've had all of them before. Um, my favorite's the blueberry muffin because I love a blueberry muffin in the morning, but the chocolate banana bread has like melty chocolate chunks. The cinnamon bun is pull apart and delicious. They're not warm, but they're very high quality pastries. So we're gonna have a little breakfast moment and then we're gonna take a walk around Riviera, check out more of this really beautiful hotel. All right, now we only have one night in this beautiful room, unfortunately for us, but it's 11 a.m., that's checkout time. Checkout's super easy, it's automatic, you literally just leave. Um, if you have any issues with your folio, it will be emailed to you, and then you can look over it and head to the front desk if there are any problems. They're actually testing the fire alarm system while I'm here, which I've never seen before. We might be checked out of the room, but that's not mean we're done. We have a lot of exploring to do, a lot of Riviera to see. The room is beautiful, but what about the rest of the hotel? 
All right, Emma is waiting for Fry. They are well on their way on their Skyliner Perfect Day. If you want to see what they've been doing this morning, what they'll continue to do, you can check out that video. But I am headed to do a little tour of the resort. So as we saw a couple of times yesterday, this here is the lobby. It's mostly this just little seating area. You've got your check-in desks over on the right, but there are a couple of amenities in the lobby to know about as well. For one, here in the far right of the check-in desk is Bell Services. This is where you can drop off your luggage when you're checking out, if you're headed to the parks, or if you arrive at the hotel before your room is ready, you can drop off your luggage there and pick it up when you have a room to put your luggage in. There are these cute little like outdoor seating areas which people tend to like go and sit and look out over everything. And then there's also a Disney Vacation Club stand here in the lobby, which is because of course Riviera is sort of the like creme de la creme of Disney Vacation Clubs here in Disney World. So you can learn about Disney Vacation Club, you can talk about joining Disney Vacation Club. And if we go down this hallway, there's actually even a Disney Vacation Club uh, showroom. So you can actually come and if you're interested, tour a two bedroom suite like the one we stayed in last night. Also off the lobby are uh, that front porca share that I saw you yesterday, which is where you'll arrive. And that's where you'll find uh, the pathway to the bus stop. So Disney bus transportation is offered from this resort. Uh, one of the perks of staying at a Disney resort is you get free transportation all around Disney World. Here at Riviera, you do have access to that Skyliner that will get you to Hollywood Studios and Epcot. To go to Magic Kingdom and Animal Kingdom, you will have to go by bus and that bus stop is just down this way. So you just kind of walk under this covered awning all the way around to the bus stop. You can also bus directly to Disney Springs and to Disney Springs for transfer to Typhoon Lagoon uh, or the other water park if it's open. Now in the instance that the Skyliner isn't running due to weather, a lot of times with wind or lightning, the Skyliner will not run. They will run buses from Riviera to the other two parks. So. If you walk up or see bad weather and see that the Skyliner isn't running, you can come out and you can hop on a bus to head directly to the parks. It's happened to me before and there was a little bit of a wait in that instance, so just be warned. Um, but it wasn't too bad. In general, if you're trying to get from one place to another in Disney World, I recommend allowing about an hour just to make sure you can get from point A to point B without any issues. We've got the store off the lobby. This is La Boutique. Oh, they have some of the new Halloween merch. This literally came out this morning that we were staying here. Uh, this display was a pride display yesterday. So these ears are so cute. Lots of very cute Halloween merch. In fact, I love this shirt too. So you'll see that the store has some seasonal merchandise. It will also have a lot of Disney Vacation Club items as this is a Disney Vacation Club store. If you are a Disney Vacation Club, you want some of those things, you can certainly grab them. We've also got like lounge flies and ears. There are Riviera specific ears. So resort stores will typically have some resort specific merch. And at these fancier hotels, it tends to be fancier or more various merch. So you've got Riviera specific merchandise here, um, some nicer designer clothes, Tommy Hilfiger. And then we've got more Riviera merchandise with these cute kids shirts, La Vida e Bella, um, tons of beautiful kids shirts. I love these big mugs that say life is beautiful. Those are so cute. Um, and they've even got plushes of Minnie, Donald, and Daisy in their Topolino's Terrace character meal outfits, which we will talk about that character meal. Um, and it doesn't in there. Tons of Riviera stuff. There's multiple pairs of Riviera ears, this little like Riviera basket. So if this is your home resort or if you just had a really good time and want a fancy souvenir, they've got them for you. Even Christmas ornaments, including this one, which is so cute. And even though they don't provide robes in the room, unfortunately, or didn't for us at least, there are robes that you can purchase. So this is very nice, very soft on the inside robe. You've got your essentials stand, which is my favorite part. Baby food, bug spray, sunscreen, medicine, uh, feminine products, anything that you might need that you may have forgotten. They've got razors, mouthwash, and toothpaste. You can grab right here. Uh, Lifesaver. This stuff is all gonna be a little expensive, so try not to forget anything, but I forget something every time I pack anywhere. I don't blame you, so you've got that here. Now because there are the full kitchens in some of the rooms, there are more grocery options here than many other hotels. You'll see that at a lot of Disney Vacation Club hotels. So you can come grab more full grocery items down here. Just a heads up, this is going to come at a bit of a premium compared to what you could get if you got it from a grocery store. So if you have your own car, you might want to do a grocery run on the first night of your trip. And if not, you might want to look into Instacarting to your hotel. 
to learn a little bit more about Instacarting, you can check out our last to leave Disney World challenge where we did Instacart a couple days in. My favorite thing about this store is that there is an Art of Disney kiosk. So you can get on demand art prints um, exactly how you want them printed on canvas or paper. And there's tons and tons of different options. This hotel is very art forward. There's art in all the hallways, art in all the rooms that was specifically designed for this hotel. And it's probably the best thing about it so obviously my favorite thing about the store if there is a piece of art that you've seen around the hotel that you really really like you can get a print of it in here we've also got some Dooney and Burks here so that's another of that like a little bit more fancy merchandise than you typically see and then some more general Disney merchandise they've got the Disney 100 collection here it's not a huge selection though so if you are looking for something specific if you see something in the park don't bet on it being at Riviera. Also, just don't bet on it being at your resort hotel at all. We've also got more Disney Vacation Club merch over here and uh, just some pins and stuff. So good for a last minute souvenir if you need one. But if you see something specific you want, if you really want to shop around, you want to check out World of Disney and Disney Springs or one of the bigger stores in the parks. Now our next stop in the lobby is a stop we've already taken a few times on this trip. We've got Le Petit Café. This is the coffee shop here at Riviera. It is a coffee shop in the morning, and then in the late afternoon, it changes to a wine bar slash lounge. Um, absolutely amazing coffee here. Best coffee in Disney World for sure. Fry Bucket and Emma. What are you doing? <laughs> also in here. Uh, may or may not be in here when you're here. In fact, often one of us is in here. Most likely, we are in here. <laughs> That's actually very we see a lot of All Ears fans when we're at Petit Cafe because we tell you guys about it, and then you guys are here, but we're also here. So if you see us, say hi. We love talking to you guys. But you can get specialty coffees, specialty iced coffees. You can get spiked coffees. And then they have a beautiful assortment of pastries. They've sort of started swapping out from the morning selection that we had uh, this morning that you saw us have in the room. But uh, Le Petit Cafe is actually themed to Aristocats, but it's kind of an interesting theme. Le Petit Cafe is actually the name of the restaurant that the drunk goose stumbles out of. But yeah, Petit Cafe is amazing. I highly recommend to stop here any time of day. If you want a glass of wine, you can get a glass of wine. And they do have olives and small little small bites in the afternoon that are really delicious. And then they have that coffee all day. One of my favorite things to do is to take the Skyliner over from Hollywood Studios while I'm having a Hollywood Studios day, get a coffee and Skyliner back as a little break from the crowds. If you do get a coffee at Petit Cafe and you have a moment to sit, you want to head next door to Voyager's Lounge. So Voyager's Lounge is this really nice um, little lounge space. It's got quiet music. It's got really nice lighting. They play stuff that your kids might be interested in on the TV most of the time. And then it looks like this library, but if you check out the walls, you'll see that there's actual Disney memorabilia in the cases, including some keepsakes from Walt Mulan's travels around the actual European Riviera with photos of them. So again, that's part of the theme of this hotel. So Voyager's Lounge is a delightful place to sit. I love sitting in the corner. It's busy right now. It is the morning. It's right around checkout time. But in the afternoon, uh, it can be a really nice, really calm escape from the hustle and bustle of Disney World. That theme continues elsewhere too, though. You can see pictures of Walt on his travels around Europe on the wall here. Um, which I think for Disney fans is just a really charming element of the hotel. Pastries are back out and look, they're very beautiful. Some of the most beautiful pastries in Disney World in my opinion. But let's head on outside. There's a whole lot more to see and some of it is downstairs. So let's go downstairs. Now one thing that's really nice about Riviera is it's not a particularly large resort. It's on the small side. Um, a lot of the rooms are super big, so even like the size of the resort isn't even that representative of it being a lot of rooms, which is really cool, and that means it's not typically very crowded. One of my favorite details is that here on the first floor you'll find these movie posters, and they are the movie posters from European countries. So I love walking down and seeing what the movies are called in other languages and stuff. Um, and also I just love looking at Disney movie posters, so it's pretty fun. We just walked past the Eventi room, which is a little event room. Sometimes there'll be like actual events in here, but it's where you can find a lot of recreation, which is pretty cool. So you can come in and check out the recreation experiences, um, which they have crafts for purchase. And then they also have the Skyliner Rally scavenger hunt, which is a little scavenger hunt where you can try to answer all the clues inside of it. But typically something like the Aventi Room is something you'll find at Disney Vacation Club hotels where there's just a little extra recreation uh, for you to do for having a resort day. So always something to check out and always check out those recreation boards to just see what some of the fun stuff you can do is. Now around this corner is Primo Piatto. Of course we came to Primo Piatto last night, but we're gonna jump in and look at the full menu real quick because we were here during the late night hours with only grab and go. 
there is mobile order and Primo Piatto is gonna be Italian fare, uh, pretty casual stuff. Um, nice quick lunches, pretty simple. Again, you'll notice because of the size of this hotel, Primo Piatto is not very large, um, but they've got salad, soup, sandwiches, um, and full entrees like the grilled vegetable skewer, which is a very delicious option that you can find at next door Bar Riva as well, but you can get it here at Primo Piatto a little bit easier. And they have desserts like tiramisu, gelato, which is pretty great. But Primo Piatto is gonna be your stop for you know, grab and go or a quick lunch or dinner. You can just pop right into Primo Piatto and sit in this nice sort of chic European design space. And now we're heading outside where there is a lot, a lot, a lot to see. So the Riviera lawns are right here and there are lawn games. Uh, so there's bocce ball where you can play bocce on this full bocce court. Um, there's also like a nice green lawn where I literally have seen people working out before. There's giant chests and like porch swings to sit on. Um, there's even cornhole and giant connect four. I always see families out here playing and I really like stuff like that because I think that it doesn't all have to be like rides and waiting in line. You can also just have some good old wholesome family games out at your Disney resort. Um, I don't think they have giant checkers, which is a bummer because Emma and I love playing checkers. Now here's one of those recreation boards where you can see some of the options. It talks about the campfire every night, weather permitting. There's movie under the stars, weather permitting. Shows what movies are playing when. Um, and it also shows, oh, plot twist, it's a new month. So they actually get to see uh, Cinderella tonight. Um, and then also some of the upcharge recreation. For a full list of recreation, you're gonna wanna ask cast members in the lobby and check out their printed handouts because they tend to have a little bit more information on what recreation is available. You can enter Primo Piatto from the pool side here. And just next door, door is the pool bar. This is my favorite pool bar in Disney World, I think. Um, it's Bar Riva, which has this beautiful tile interior. It feels super breezy and summery and light and they have a really amazing menu. The grilled vegetable skewer is my absolute favorite, but everything on the menu is pretty tasty. Uh, and they also have a full list of specialty cocktails. There's frozen cocktails like the Frosé and the Mediterranean Wave. Just a lot that you can come in here and grab. Um, and you can do grab and go or you can sit and eat, which is pretty cool, especially if you're having a nice pool day um, to kind of get out of the sun and have a nice refreshing meal. So the main pool here is the Riviera Pool. Riviera Pool is um, a relatively large uh, pool. It definitely is like pretty busy right now, but it still doesn't seem overly crowded. Cause again, this resort just isn't super huge. It does have this very cool water slide that winds around a tower, which is awesome. Um, or as Disney puts it, a stately column. And there are spas and things like that. One thing I like about Riviera Pools are that the pool chairs are one, adjustable, to how you want to lay down, which all Disney pool chairs are not. And two, they are soft. They're cloth pool chairs, which I love. And perhaps the most fun thing about Riviera pools is the kids splash pad. The kids splash pad is actually Fantasia inspired. So you'll notice the dancing hippos and elephants from Fantasia. This is called Sivu Play, uh, which I think is fun because it's if you please, but it also sounds like if you play. And uh, there's like a little slide. There's just a very exciting splash pad. I know that I wish I was a little kid so that I could play in this. There's a ton of kiddos over there having a blast. Riviera is also extremely close to Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort. You can literally walk right around here and be there. Um, and there's this beach right here, which is kind of between the two hotels. But if you wanna sit on a sand beach, you can just come on over here and look out at Barefoot Bay. You can also, of course, explore Caribbean Beach, which if you wanna learn more about it, you can check out my full tour or my highlights of things you need to know before staying at Caribbean Beach. They also do have poolside service. I just saw a cast member going around and taking some orders, which is something that you won't, will not find at every Disney hotel, but is obviously a really nice amenity. Now back here by the water, this is actually the movie lawn. So the movie lawn is right in front of the water. You can see it's a little bit small, but you could see the movie from the pool if you watched it. There are a few chairs out here, but not a ton. If you plan on doing movie under the stars, I would consider like having a blanket to watch it if you're able. Um, but they come and set up a big projector screen right here so you can watch the movie. And you can see that happen in Fry and Emma's Skyliner Perfect Day video. And then we also have a campfire over here. This campfire uh, is a nightly occurrence and you can do s'mores, which is very cool. Um, 
but you find this right on the water. It's just a beautiful spot to have a campfire, honestly. Now this is a beautiful area for some photos as well uh, because the Riviera itself is a very beautiful hotel. Um, and if you come out in this courtyard, uh, we've often taken some pretty cute pictures out here. So I think I might take some photos for All Your Style, which is our uh, sort of style brand where you can check out outfits to wear to the park. Now Riviera Pool is not the only pool. There is also Beau Soleil Pool, which is my favorite of the pools because it is quieter. There's not a water slide, not as many kiddos, but still super relaxing. The beautiful pool umbrellas and comfy, stripy pool furniture. There is another spa over here, so you can have a hot tub and it's just nice, relaxing. Right now, only adults over there and it's like prime pool time. Now, there are a couple ways you can get your fitness in when you're staying at Riviera. One of those is through the running trail, which goes all the way around and through Caribbean Beach Resort as well. I actually highly recommend that running trail. I'm not a runner, but I do like to take walks. And one of my favorite walks to take in Disney World is that running trail because I find Riviera so beautiful and I find Caribbean Beach so beautiful. It's just such a pleasant walk, especially if you do it like pretty early in the morning or pretty close to sundown. And I mentioned that dedicated Skyliner station. That's right up here, as you can see. Um, the Skyliner does fly uh, towards Epcot and towards Hollywood Studios. If you're headed to Hollywood Studios or any of the other Skyliner hotels, you will have to get off at Caribbean Beach Resort to transfer. But if you're headed to Epcot, you do have a direct line here from the Riviera over to Epcot. Uh, you can just hop in a gondola and head that way. I have never waited in a very long line here. Even at Rope Drop, last time I stayed here at Riviera, I did uh, go pretty early to Hollywood Studios and had no issue with any lines. So this is not a more popular Skyliner station, pretty easy to board and a really awesome amenity. I think it's super easy to get around. I think after we walk around the resort, I might head over to Epcot to uh, have some lunch and we'll take the Skyliner there and see how long it takes. If you wanna see how long the Skyliner takes and what the experience is like over to Hollywood Studios, you can check out my last Riviera Resort tour where we stayed in the tower room. Now, absolutely gorgeous theming element at Riviera. Riviera has been like criticized for not being the most grandiose hotel despite being so expensive, but there is one element that I think is incredibly grandiose and beautiful, and that's these two mosaics. So these mosaics are floor to ceiling to ceiling to floor mosaics. And one of them, as you can see, is Peter Pan showing London on one side and Neverland on the other. It is a beautiful tile mosaic. The artists who created this were so, so talented. I remember before Riviera opened, watching the like sneak peeks of these mosaics on uh, Instagram and just being totally wowed. And in person, if I'm at Riviera, I'm stopping to take a look at these mosaics. They are just so gorgeous. The other one is a tangled mosaic. So you've got Rapunzel's tower on one side, up and over the ceiling, you start to see those lanterns, and then you have the Kingdom of Corona on the other. So just a gorgeous piece of art. This is like where Riviera really exemplifies that focus on art and artwork and everything. Um, and I just think mosaics are such a beautiful art form. One of my favorite things in Magic Kingdom are the mosaics under Cinderella Castle. So this reminds me of that. It just like warms my heart to see and I find them so beautiful. Now here on the like ground floor as you're walking in, you will find the fitness center here at this hotel. This is the Athletic Fitness Center um, and it is a state-of-the-art fitness center. Relatively large, they've got like water you can grab and fresh fruit as well as like moist towels so it's a little bit fancier of a gym and if you want to get your workout in on vacation i think that you will be pleased with what they've got going on in here fry actually went and worked out this morning so if you want to see more about the fitness center you can go check out their skyliner perfect day because that was part of hers i'm not a working out on vacation girly um so i don't ever use gyms at hotels but if you are it's certainly something to consider because not every disney hotel has access to a fitness center and even some of the deluxes don't. High stress situation happening over here. Look who's here! Oh my goodness! This is intense. Ah. Well, the Connect 4 game was dramatic, and then it got even more dramatic because it started raining on us. Um, and now I've lost Fry and Emma. They're off to have their perfect day. But we've got to go check out more hotel because there's more to see. So I'm getting in the elevator because the Crim de la Crim of Riviera Dining is going to be on the 10th floor of the East Wing. 
and that's where we're headed. We went there last night, but we're gonna talk a little bit more about Topolino's Terrace. We just did the lounge, and there's a whole lot more about Topolino's Terrace to know. So the view from Topolino's is gorgeous during the day as well as at night. Absolutely beautiful, sweeping views. You can see all the way to Animal Kingdom, looking at Expedition Everest, looking at uh, Tower of Terror, and you get kind of this lovely welcome in to Topolino's Terrace. Now Topolino's has a breakfast offering and a dinner offering. The dinner offering is what you saw last night where it's a finer dining, signature dining meal, serving Mediterranean and Riviera favorites like pasta, fish, and seafood. Um, the pastas are made fresh here at Riviera. Um, there's these beautiful cases when you come in showing off some of their wines, some of their olive oils, and some of their beautiful pastas that you can eat in. But during breakfast, this restaurant actually transitions to be a character restaurant. Breakfast at Topolino's Terrace is breakfast a la art, which is a character breakfast with Mickey the artist, Minnie the poet, Donald the sculptor, and Daisy the dancer. It is a prefix meal that starts with pastries and includes an entree. Um, and I have heard from many that it is the best character meal in Disney World. I have never done breakfast a la art, but you can see several members of our team experience both breakfast and dinner here at Topolino's Terrace to see if, you know, it's a restaurant that can do both, which, spoiler alert, it is. Uh, if you're thinking about Topolino's Terrace, I highly recommend that video. And if you're thinking about Topolino's Terrace, as long as the money's uh, not too scary, uh, I recommend going, look, there's Dancer Daisy. And that's pretty much everything here at Riviera Resort. Next, we're gonna see how long it takes the Skyliner to Epcot. Hopefully not too long, I'm pretty sure it's quick. And we're gonna talk a little bit about whether or not a stay here at Riviera or a stay in one of those two bedroom suites is worth it. park hours. This is a really amazing park where on select nights you can stay in some of the parks. You can see those extended evening hours in Fry Bucket's attempt at riding every single ride in Disney World in one day. She attempted it yesterday. Uh, also, the Disney Dining Plan is set to return relatively soon, which is another perk, reserve perk. The pros of Disney's Riviera Resort are that it has an amazing location with the Skyliner. It's easy to get to Epcot and Hollywood Studios. It's also pretty centrally located in Disney World in general, so it isn't too long of a bus ride to Magic Kingdom or Animal Kingdom. You also get amazing dining options. Every single dining location at Riviera Resort is one of the best. We love going to all of them. And you also have a really awesome variety of rooms. You can stay any, in anything from some of the smallest rooms in Disney World to some of the largest. So there's a lot of options there. As a reminder, if you are looking into doing some sort of point rental to get a discount on one of these DVC hotels, you can check out at DVC Rentals on socials or dvcrequest.com or just Google David's Vacation Rentals and they can help you out. Cons wise, Disney's Riviera Resort is expensive. Even with Point Rental, it's one of the more expensive Disney Vacation Club hotels. And you can stay in really large, though not as beautiful rooms for cheaper, renting points to stay at Saratoga Springs or Old Key West or some other DVC option. Also, because it is fully a Disney Vacation Club resort, it doesn't have quite as many amenities and it's a little bit lighter on theme than many of the other deluxe Disney resorts. So if you really want that super exciting, very grandiose theme, you wanna check out something like Grand Floridian or Fort Wilderness or Animal Kingdom Lodge, those resorts are gonna have a little bit more pizzazz. When it comes to whether or not Riviera is worth it, both of my stays at Riviera have been absolutely fantastic and I've loved them. I love having resort time there and I love their access to the parks. Would I ever pay for the room we stayed in? Straight out of pocket? Absolutely, I would not. I would 100% look into point rental. Point rental though makes these rooms not quite as egregious. The fact that we could do a night there for $1,000 a night and it sleeps so many people means that that starts becoming realistic. If you split that room among a larger party of adults, it becomes the kind of thing that isn't super luxuriously priced. It's something that regular people can afford if they wanna do a little bit more exciting of a stay and actually have access to a kitchen and things like that. All right, and I'm off the Skyliner after just a quick seven minute ride to Epcot, so not too shabby at all. Coming off the Skyliner to Epcot, you do enter through International Gateway, which is at the back of the park, so just something to consider. You'll be coming in by France, which makes it pretty easy to rope drop Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, and also thematically accurate to Riviera as well. Now I'm gonna head and grab some lunch, but if you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe, and now go watch our tour of a one-bedroom villa at Disney's Beach Club Resort. We'll see you there. Bye!